World of Warcraft, Fortnite, Minecraft. What do these games all have in common? They are all online games, all have online mode. Online play makes a game more fun and replayable. We scratchers want to make online games too, but in the past, it was hard to design them in Scratch. Gandhi IDE presents you with a simple MMO extension. This powerful and flexible toolkit helps you to make an online game easily. This series is a very basic tutorial on simple MMO. I will explain all the blocks in this extension in three episodes. First episode, I will show you how to connect to a server room, broadcast, and receive messages. Next episode, all players in the game will be displayed. The last episode, we will make the matching system. Subscribe to this channel and don't miss it. And now, here we go. First, open Gandhi IDE. Let's install the simple MMO extension. Click the extension button, find it, and install it. When we make an online game, the very first step is to connect the player to a server room. We can use this block. When the player connects to a server room, this event will be triggered. In this block, you can set a server ID for the room. The server ID can be any string. I usually use the name of the game. You can also set the extra data of the player in this block. I will introduce it in episode 2. There are three optional room types. Broadcast is the most common one. The lobby and match room are always used together to build a matching system. We will learn to use them in episode 3. The last option, you can choose to join or create a room, or just create a new room. If you choose to join or create, the program will first look for an available room. If one is not found, a new room will be created. If you choose to create, the new room will be created directly. This is a very basic block in the simple MMO extension, and there is another version with a wait. This block will pause the script until the player has connected to the room. You can check whether the connection is successful by getting the information about the room. With this block, you can get a session ID, room ID, and room type. Before you connect to a room, the value of this block is not a number. When the connection is successful, you can get the correct value. The session ID is the unique ID of a player. The room ID is the unique ID of the room. They are each 9 digit. You can get the value of lag with this block. Creators usually display it on the stage so that the player can figure out the quality of their internet connection. Next two blocks, every player in the room can set and get the extra data of a room. Extra data is some information related to the room. You can use the extra data as a billboard or store some information that should be shared with all players in the room, like the map. I will show you an example. In this case, there are several backdrops in the project. Players can set a backdrop of a room by setting the extra data to the name of the backdrop. When new players connect, just set the backdrop with the extra data. A similar logic applies to storing the map. When players or extra data in the room have changed, this event will be triggered. With this block, you can get a session ID of the player who made a change. You can also monitor the state and changes of the room with terminal. For example, when I change the extra data of the room, you can see the room state in green and the changes in yellow. If you want to use this information, like the pre
previous value of the actual data, you can use this block from the data extension in this way. Let's turn to the last two blocks in this section. You can use this block to disconnect. Use this block to accept multi-IDs for one user. It is usually used to test online games. When you want to test a game by yourself, you can enable it and copy the path to another tab. Now, you will have two players in the room to test the game. After connecting to the server, players can send messages to others and receive others' messages. Use this block to send a message. The first input is the type of the message, and the second input is the content of the message. When the player receives a message from another player, this event will be triggered. You can get the session ID, user ID, and the name of the sender, type, and the content of the message. For example, using this script, you can build a chat system with a list. Here is a tip. The event can only be triggered by others' messages, so you need to add messages which are broadcast by yourself. The message system can be used to create a lot of functions. We will use it in the next episode. That's all for now. In this episode, we learned how to connect to a server room, get some basic information about the room, and broadcast and receive messages. In the next episode, we will learn about blocks used to display players. See you next time.